Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, over the years, people have asked me about my urban portraits or what most people call street photography. And it's one of the most difficult questions I'm asked because really there's no simple answer. And there are a lot of different questions about those portraits. Well, this week we're going to try it. We're going to take a look at a very long question sent to us from Verona in Germany. And I think he's done a great job of summarizing most of the common questions about urban photography. He said, I was looking at your portfolio called The Street and was wondering how you get people to let you take their picture. How do you get the conversation started and how do you convince people to let them take their picture? Are these just naturally curious and self-confident people? Do you tell people how to pose or do your pictures just capture their natural reaction during a conversation? Is street photography a matter of personality or training? How important are communication skills? What's the most important thing to keep in mind for spontaneously shot portraits? Well, that's a lot to cover. Well, remember, there are thousands of photographers taking street portraits, and there are thousands of different ways to take these photos. So don't be confused if you see photographers giving conflicting advice on this topic. There really isn't one specific and correct way to shoot street photos. Now, street photography is definitely a matter of both personality and training. But I think personality and personal vision has more to do with it than training itself. In fact, you can shoot street photography with almost any camera, from a camera phone to a high-end large format camera. But the important thing is you have to be able to engage people. Now, my methodology for doing this is, well, it's my own. So please take what I share, make changes to it, and make it work for you. Now, to help out with this episode, our videographer, Matt, he followed me around for a little bit while I took some street portraits, and so hopefully those behind-the-scenes clips will give you a clearer picture of how I shoot. Well, before we begin, I have to tell you that my methodology is heavily influenced by the work of a guy named James Noctway and the documentary film War Photographer shot by Christian Frey. Now, on my blog, I've written a lot about Noctway's influence on my work, and we've reposted those articles at the Adorama Learning Center. So make sure you check the, out his work. I think it's key to the way I shoot street photos, and it's well worth your time to read and understand Noctway's credo. Well, let's begin today by talking about some of the technical details when shooting urban portraits. Now, for me, depth of field is very important, and so I tend to focus on faces and uh, let the backgrounds just sort of fall out of focus. And I'm almost always shooting in aperture priority mode with an aperture value of about 4.5 or wider. And I tend to shoot with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Now, that shorter lens allows me to get a little bit closer to my subjects, and I tend to keep that uh, zoom between about 50 and 70 millimeters so I don't have too much distortion in my images. And for focus, it's pretty simple. I just use one shot or single focus mode. And that way, once my focus is locked, it just always stays locked. Well, honestly, the technical details of shooting urban portraiture, well, it's pretty straightforward. So I think what we need to do is take a look at some of the other questions that people ask. How do you get the conversation started? And how do you approach people? Well, I'm a people person. My dad is a Southern Baptist preacher, and I grew up in an environment of constantly meeting new people and having to engage with them, and so it just sort of comes naturally to me. I just sort of walk up to people, and I say hello, and I ask them where they're from and what their interests are, and you know, all the stuff that you normally ask people that you just met. Well, sometimes people see me taking photos and they'll ask me to take a photo of them. And this happens all the time. And it's a great way to get the conversation started. All right. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> me too. <laughs> what about me? You said you didn't want your picture taken. Now you do? You said you're going to put it on YouTube, right? There you go. Good, good. Nice.
All right, you guys got to go catch up. Do you tell people to pose? Well, sometimes I give people some pointers. Uh, for example, I've asked this woman to give her husband a little kiss on the cheek, and I think I got a great response. <laughs> I gave him a little peck on the cheek. There we go. Hey, there we go. When I was in India, I saw these kids playing and I posed them in the door of this house and I did that because I really liked the color combinations, but there's really no way to make them smile naturally and capturing that is just something that happened and so it's sort of organic. How important are communication skills? Well, communication skills are very important. You have to be able to connect with people very quickly. Now for me, street photography is more about meeting people and having that experience of that conversation than it is the photography. The photography and the photos, well, they're just sort of a byproduct, a benefit of that experience of meeting new people. So without good communication skills, you're not gonna be able to engage people and start those conversations. So communication skills, extremely important. Do I need a model release? Well, the quick answer to that is yes, you need a model release, but it really depends on how you're using the images. And I'm not a lawyer, and so the, there are two resources that you should check out. One is the American Society of Media Photographers, and the other is the Professional Photographers of America. So both ASMP and PPA have sample model releases with guidance on when you need a model release and how to use them. The other thing is, if you're out shooting street portraits, it's really hard to carry around a piece of paper and a pen to have people sign it. So I recommend using an iPad or an iPhone and using an app like iRelease to get your model releases. Now one thing that you have to understand is if you're shooting minors, any kids, you absolutely have to have permission to use those photos from their parent or guardian. And if you don't have permission, you can't use the photos. So make sure you get permission when working with kids. Do you do any post-processing? Absolutely. I, I like to do post-processing. I like to convert a lot of images to black and white or desaturate those images and kick up the contrast and add vignettes. Occasionally I'll do some cropping, but the bottom line is post-processing is unique to every photographer. So do what works for you. Maybe take some inspiration from some other successful street photographers, but you're going to design and create your own style as years go forward. What's the most important thing for spontaneous portraits? Well, I have to say it's practice, 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 because nothing is the same twice. And you really have to know how to quickly change your camera settings and adjust your exposure, all while you're engaging your subject. And don't forget that engagement with your subject, having that conversation and getting to know them. Well, that's the most important thing. And so if you're distracted trying to figure out how to focus your camera or change it to a different mode, well, that conversation isn't gonna be taking place and you're gonna lose the opportunity to get some great portraits. So your camera really needs to become an extension of you, not something that takes your focus away from your subject. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. I just want to uh, let you know that we've added a lot of information about street photography to the Adorama Learning Center. So don't miss out on this valuable content. And while you're there, if you're an experienced urban portrait photographer, please leave us a comment with your thoughts and a link to your work so we can all learn from what you're doing. Now, I've posted a link to the Adorama Learning Center resources in the description of this video. So make sure you check them out. Well, don't forget to subscribe to our videos. And if you have questions about photography, please send them to me at askmark at adorama.com. And I might just use them on an upcoming episode. Well, happy shooting. I'll see you again next week.
This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.